Hi, and welcome to Mark and Rush's podcast. And as you might have guessed, I'm Mark. Every year I work with a couple of hundred students who will spend the summer in America on the summer work and travel program. And I try to help prepare them for some of the differences between our two countries. Today I'm going to discuss some of the subtle yet important differences concerning summer fashions between America and Russia. While I try to explain that the differences don't really matter, they do actually, and I'll try to explain why. Every summer, approximately 150,000 students from all over the world enter America for the summer months in order to participate in the work and travel program. About 30,000, or 20 percent, are Russian students. Look, I really love my country and I want the students uh, that I know to have a great summer, bring, bringing back good memories and also an accurate and real picture about what America and Americans are really like. But I do have to help them out a bit in order to not shock or stand out in a crowd too much. This video will deal with some fashion differences, so let's get started. Something that I feel is good advice is, when you go to America, bring only a small amount of clothing with you. I mention this for a couple of reasons. First, Americans are quite casual in their manner of dress. They are more concerned about comfort than what others think about them. During the summer, you will be wearing shorts and t-shirts almost exclusively. So you can just leave any more formal clothing here in Russia. You won't need it. Besides, you want to travel light. Clothing in the U.S. is much less expensive than in Russia, and the quality is quite high. I find that most people, when they travel there, tend to buy a lot of clothes, and therefore should keep as much of their luggage weight as possible open in order to bring back as much as possible. Actually, what I do when I go to America is I, I wear like my oldest pair of jeans some shirt I don't even like anymore and then I bring maybe enough clothes for one more day with me and that's all as soon as I get uh, to America my first day I go shopping I take the old jeans I have the shirt I don't really like I throw them away so therefore my baggage is empty in terms of clothing and everything I bring back is all new stuff and I get the maximum weight well, let's start with the differences, and shoes seem to be a good place to start. I try to express things in a diplomatic fashion, but concerning shoe fashion here in Russia, I just can't. Pointy shoes are extremely weird, and I'll never get used to seeing these. If you bring these to the U.S. and actually wear them, people will think that you have extremely strange fashion tastes. And when I say strange, man, I don't mean like quirky or different. I mean just weird. Leave these pointy shoes at home, or better yet, pitch them in the garbage. There are absolutely no redeeming qualities about these freakish things that people actually wear. Sorry to be so non-diplomatic, but sometimes the cold hard truth needs to be told. Keep up this pointy shoe trend, and I'll show you what comes next. Actually, these boots aren't too extreme by what I've seen here in Russia, but in America you would look like some kind of a clown to people. Besides, how can these possibly be comfortable? The only people in America who would wear such shoes are Mexicans, and Americans typically don't look south of the border for fashion ideas. Wearing such shoes leads to a slippery slope that just gets more and more ridiculous. Stay away from that slope if you can help it. Do you think that this photo is a joke? <laughs> it's no joke. These are actually Mexicans hanging out together. I think that this might be why Mexican people often try to get out of Mexico by any means possible. I would. For the people in this picture, they feel that they are the height of fashion. For a normal onlooker, they are an extreme joke. So, this is the slippery slope that your pointy-toed shoes are leading you to. If you wish to be a clown, keep on wearing them. If you wish to be taken seriously, throw them away or donate them to some poor Mexican people. A true friend will not allow the friend to look like some sort of freakish clown. Now let's move on. 
but we'll stay with the foot. Guys, wearing black socks with shorts is just fine here in Russia, but in America it looks really strange. If you wear these, people will think that you are either a very old man or else that you just don't know any better. Actually, that you don't know much at all. So leave your black socks in Russia. You won't need these in America. All of the guys shown here with black socks and shorts are old guys, but don't think that it's okay for old guys to dress like this. These guys look weird to other old guys. Most times we would just think that they are single without any sense of fashion or without a wife or girlfriend to tell them that they look a bit ridiculous like this. Do you want to look like an old man? If so, bring on your black socks. White socks are not at all expensive in America and like many things there, you get volume discounts. Don't buy white socks here in Russia before you go to America. You will pay a lot more here for lesser quality. You can buy a package with 10 pairs of socks, that's 20 socks, for $10 in the States. So just wait until you arrive and then buy them. And these are also thick socks, they're 100% cotton, they're great. Okay, speaking of shorts, notice here that it is also normal to not wear socks with shorts. In terms of styles of shorts, they are about the same as here. So what the hell are Speedos? Speedos are what we call a bikini bottom type of bathing suits that a lot of men wear in Russia. Guys, never, never bring or especially wear these in America. What may be okay to wear in Russia or some other European countries is not necessarily okay in America. You can wear these if you want, but first I should tell you who else wears these in America. Gays wear Speedos in America. As a matter of fact, if you see a guy wearing Speedos, chances are pretty good that he's a gay guy. I think that it's part of a gay secret code. In case you didn't notice, these guys in the photo are gay. How do I know? Well, apart from the arms around each other, they're wearing Speedos. Enough said. So guys, if you wear these in America, don't be surprised if a lot of guys want to be your close, special friend. Guys, wait until you get to America to buy your bathing suit. You'll find a much bigger selection and lower prices for good quality suits. And they will not be fake Nike or other brands. They'll be authentic. These are just some examples of I'm not gay type of men's bathing suits. But the selection is huge, so look around. Now let's move beyond this. In America, the very term men's handbag or man bag would be an oxymoron in most parts of the country. I understand that in many European countries this would be normal for a guy to carry. Something I would expect to see a Frenchman carrying. Oops, another oxymoron. In America, most men would think that you are either gay or metrosexual if you carry a men's handbag. A briefcase, sports bag, or backpack would be absolutely okay though. Well, I'm sure that the girls are getting bored thinking that only the guys have to think differently about summer fashion in America. But don't worry, you two have some things to think about. Okay, girls. For the most part, you have it pretty easy when you go to America. As I mentioned earlier, you should dress very casual. While guys have to watch what kind of bathing suit they wear, you do not. You can wear the same thing that you would wear here, but you do have to be careful with a few things that might seem innocent enough in Russia. Maybe you can spot the problem in this picture. Do you see it? Yeah, that's right. You don't wear heels with a bathing suit. Just a few more examples to show you. Just a side note, you should probably try to stay away from the tall, clear plastic heels in any situation. Actually, it's pretty acceptable and normal in America for a girl to wear a bikini with high heels. That is, when she is a contestant for Miss Universe or Miss America swimsuit competition. But that's pretty much the only time. 
Oh, wait a minute. I just remembered who else wears a bikini and high heels. Strippers and prostitutes. So, in my humble opinion, it's far better to not wear the heels with your bathing suit and avoid any unpleasant attention. Yes, you would certainly get noticed and draw attention, but perhaps not in the way that you would like. Now it's time for our summary. Although I've presented much of this in a tongue-in-cheek manner, there really is a lot of truth to the material that I just presented to you. We need to remember every culture has its own sensibilities and differs from other cultures. Whether you comply with a culture's norms or not, it's important to know the norms of the country that you are visiting. And, last of all but not least, listen to my advice so that you don't look like a freak while in America. Or don't listen. It's up to you. Now it's time for some of our new vocabulary. Subtle means like mysterious, hard to grasp or understand, slight. Pointy or pointed, sharpened or tapering to a point. Here I'm talking about the shoes. South of the border, this just means Mexico. Slippery slope, a type of behavior or result that becomes more difficult to change as time passes. Let me give you an example. Some young, young person decides they want to try to smoke marijuana. And an adult or, or a friend might say to them, listen, don't even try it because you're, getting in, you're, you're entering a very slippery slope. What this means is the marijuana may, after a while, may lead them to want to try cocaine. After cocaine, LSD, heroin, whatever. So maybe you understand now. And some more vocabulary. Oxymoron. A figure of speech in which apparently contradictory terms appear in conjunction. In Russian, it's just oxymoron, almost the same as in English. Metrosexual, a straight man who embraces the homosexual lifestyle except the man sex thing. For example, refined tastes in clothing, excessive use of designer hygiene products, etc. Okay, if you're a guy and you're out getting a manicure, uh, a permanent with your hair, maybe some frosting on it, okay, you wear Calvin Klein underwear and buy all kinds of special uh, skin creams, you are a metrosexual. It doesn't mean you're gay, but it means you act rather effeminate. Uh, typically, the word metrosexual, metro, comes from the fact that it's usually young people living in a city. In, a, in the country, if you act like this, people kick your ass. Tongue-in-cheek. In this situation, it means to do this in a not serious manner, perhaps a joking manner. And by this I mean the way that I try to present the material. Thank you for listening to the end of the video. Uh, I hope that you learned something about summer fashion in America. I think it's rather simple, but there are some small differences. Uh, I hope that you listen again when I make my next video. Until that time, goodbye.